Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am joined today by Veronica Hansen, and I'm really excited for this conversation because she has done some pretty incredible things. So let's dive into her story and have her tell us more about who she is and what she does. Veronica, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Amy. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm so excited to learn more because... When you submitted your application, you talked about something that's near and dear to my heart. And one of those things is, you know, minimalism, which involves decluttering, which was my first business. So before we dive into that, tell us more about yourself. Who are you and what do you do? So I'm Veronica. I currently live in Tokyo, Japan. I live here with my husband and my two children. They are eight and 10 years old. And actually two months ago, I just moved my parents here also from the United States to live with us here in Tokyo, which was part of the appeal of moving here is it was somewhere that my parents were willing to move. Our previous country was a developing country and they weren't really interested in living there. So we decided to find a place that my parents would be happy to live. So now we're all living in Tokyo, um, but we are originally from Oregon. So that's where my kids were born. And I just was a regular suburban housewife. I like had a white picket fence, an electric car and all the regular stuff. You know, I was just a regular suburban mom until the day that I wasn't. And so that's kind of what we're here to talk about today and how minimalism fits into all of that. Um, So that's kind of a little bit of my background. That's incredible. So where did this truly start? I don't, did you wake up one day and go, you know what, I, I'm done with this. You know, I'm living the dream life, you know, quote unquote, I've got, you know, all the boxes checked according to society. Did you just wake up one day and just start questioning? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. So there was two things that really happened. One is that I was at a business conference and we were talking about goal setting, which I was, I coached on, on goal setting. I was like all in it, you know, just making sure that people were motivated And as I was reflecting on my own goals, at the point where my kids were finally in school, I I looked at myself and I said, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing for the next 15 years. This doesn't seem fun anymore. (laughs) Because at the beginning of your kids' lives, you know, there's so many benchmarks and there's so many things that you're moving through and it's chaos and it's wonderful and it's, it's just a lot. But once they get into school and it feels like things calm down, I truly didn't know what I was supposed to do with myself. And so that little, I guess, little thought in my head was implanted that I was Mm -hmm. not sure where I was going with my life. And then um, the second thing that happened was I was getting my daughter, my youngest daughter ready for school one day. I'm sure this has happened to every single mom listening to this is that you're in a mad rush. You're already running late in the morning. Things are just everywhere in your house. There's just piles of stuff everywhere. And my daughter wanted to bring a particular doll to school. So I'm running around, I'm looking in her bed and I'm trying to load her in the car and I'm trying to throw together my coffee and I'm doing all the the mom morning routine and I can't find this doll. And I know if I do not find it, you just, you're holding your breath for the, the meltdown. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause you know what's going to happen. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh my gosh, this doll. And, and it's really precious to her. But at that moment, as a mom, you're like, I hate this doll. I hate the doll. And so eventually just by happenstance, I passed a particular spot in my kitchen and I saw that the doll was on my kitchen counter. And at that moment, I think I had a, like a little snap. I snapped (laughs) and I was like, okay, the doll was on my kitchen counter and it just caused half an hour of stress in my life because I have too much stuff. I cannot find the important things and this has got to change. So in that moment, we became minimalists. I mean, I know we still had all this stuff, but that was the moment that like 
I didn't even process that we were going to become minimalist, but that's the moment I knew we were getting rid of everything. Oh my gosh. Yes. We can totally relate. I mean, every single mom out there, I, I know myself, we've had those moments where it's like the most trivial little thing. And it's like, well, where, where did you put it? Like it can't just magically vanish. So yes, we can all relate to that. And yeah, we get stuck on autopilot and we just, you know, kind of go through life existing, like just checking off those boxes. Like, all right, when they're an infant, you're trying to keep them alive. Then they become toddlers and you're trying to make sure they don't harm themselves. And then they're in elementary. And it's like, okay, I can breathe for a couple hours a day, especially, you know, when both kids are in school for me, it was like, hey, I've got some more time. I've got, I can finally like exhale for once in my life. But yeah, that is a point when we start to almost feel lost, like, and start to question, you know, you have that space and it's like, what, what is my purpose? Why are we doing this? Why are we just going through these motions and trying to keep up with the Joneses? So with that minute moment in time, you just had that clarity. It's like, okay, no, we are, we are going to make the choice to, to adopt this new mindset, this new lifestyle. So where did you start? We started with the garage sale <laughs> as a lot of minimalists do, because you want to recoup some of that cost. You just feel like giving it away is just like, you spent good money on it. So part of our process was that we just had a massive garage sale. And that was like just a few weeks after that moment of where I snapped. <laughs> and so after the garage sale, um, a series of things happened really quickly. And I feel like minimalism gave me the ability to say yes to a bunch of random things that before minimalism, I never would have said yes to. So we started Airbnb in our house, like the house that we lived in. There was a big event coming to town and hotels were going for crazy high prices. So we were like, what if we just stayed with our family and just let people like strangers stay in our house? And we like made thousands of dollars in just a couple of days just by leaving our house which we never could have done prior to minimalism. And then we spent two years, this is prior to COVID. We spent two years Airbnb in our house, just part-time. And anytime we would get booked, we would book a vacation and we would just use the money to just travel with our kids. And so we adopted this lifestyle that was just like a lot freer than I felt like I had previously had. And minimalism just sort of was that tool that allowed me to, to harness the opportunity and just say yes. When usually people would just be like, oh, that's a little crazy. Who wants strangers in their house? They would say all these things, but they also would love to go to Spain or Paris or wherever, you know, they would love to do those things, but they just can't see themselves making the sacrifice of letting someone stay in their house. So it was a trade-off, but for us and our family, it ended up being a really good one. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I love how creative you got. It was like, okay, yeah, we're going to make this money. Let's go do something fun. Let's live a little. And I love how you said minimalism gave you the ability to say yes, because how many times do we just put ourselves in these little boxes? We, we become a victim to our circumstances and we make excuses constantly. It's like, oh, I could never do that but you're showing us that it is possible. You just have to get creative and overcome those self-limiting beliefs and look at the experiences that you have provided your children with. And those are things they will remember because you know, even looking back at my own childhood, I remember a few gifts here and there. I remember experiences though. I remember going and doing things. And that's what I'm trying to do for my children is have those experiences live life because you know nothing's guaranteed we think that okay well maybe one day I'll retire and then and then and then it's like well that day may never come you may not have you know we take our health for granted there's so many things we take for granted I just love how you now you know took that control back so what did your family say when you proposed this to them how did you go about getting kids on board how did you get your partner on board like because that may not be an easy thing. You know, that may be a scary conversation for others to have. 
Absolutely. And I don't want to give any illusion that everybody was on board <laughs> at all. I mean, it was definitely out of left field. Um, I think my kids were young enough when we started this lifestyle that they didn't necessarily weigh in. You know, now my daughters are older. And so I think that they are having more opinions about where we go and what we do. <laughs> but before they were just like, oh, sweet. Like, ladybug girl is in Paris. Let's go there. <laughs> you know, it was like, it was all fun and games to them. My husband, you know, he was not initially on board either. Um, because you know, he just came from a very strict background and he was like, that's not how we're supposed to do it. But, you know, as things went well, I think that became the proof. Uh, and I think that is true with any resistant partner. I mean, I have coached so many women who have resistant partners for a, a variety of things. And the number one reason why they're resistant is because they have no proof that the thing the wife is trying to sell them is going to work. And so once the proof starts rolling in, then it's like, well, it's harder for them to be the naysayer because there's evidence now <laughs> that's coming in that says this is working. Right. I mean, it goes back to the primal brain trying to protect us when it doesn't have a past experience to compare it to. Yeah. It's going to lock it down. And the logic part of our brain is going to kick in and be like, well, no, I, I, I don't see that this is possible. So I'm just going to put the emergency brake on right now and stop you in your tracks. And that's where a lot of people start to limit themselves and then not to take any risks. And then you look back at your life and you go, what just happened? <laughs> you know? Totally. Where, how did we get here? So what I want to dig into as well is just talking about like the three levels of desire that we all have within us and how that can kind of hold us back or create wild opportunities. So can we dive into that as well? Totally. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I have this theory about the three levels of desire being, um, just sort of these awkward phases that we just do because of social expectations. So level one is the level that you're willing to say out loud. So anytime someone says like, oh, well, what do you want from your life or whatever? You have these canned responses that are just like, they sound good and reasonable. They sound reasonable. Right. Um, and somebody, you know, of your level in life <laughs> deserves that kind of, you know, the level one is just sort of to shut people up, right? The level two desires are the, the, the desires that you think about in your head, but they're the things that like give you the warm fuzzies, but you don't really talk about them that much because it's like people like me don't have a life like that. And so it's like, you know, whatever level you're at, there's going to be things like, Ooh, a Tesla to drive is like real fancy. You like to think about that, but it's like kind of out of reach and ridiculous, those kinds of things. People want epic vacations. People want a, you know, a major remodel, whatever. That's the, sort of the level two, the things that you think about, but you don't really talk about. And that is where people stay for their whole lives. And the reason we know that the level two is not what they actually want is because it hasn't motivated them to change any behaviors. So they aren't doing anything to create that life that they're supposedly thinking about and they're super happy about and like, that would make them happy. They haven't changed anything. So the level three, I call that the kick the idea in the face level. And so this is the idea is that as soon as they pop into your mind, you kick them in the face because they are too ridiculous. They are so out of left field that anybody would just straight up tell you you're an idiot. <laughs> it's too insane. Like you absolutely cannot live that life. And so for me, it would be packing my family of four into six suitcases and traveling the world for two years and then moving my parents to one of the countries that we happen to be in at the moment. Like that's too crazy. Nobody would have thought rewind two and a half years ago. Nobody would have thought that that life is reasonable. That is absolutely insane. It's nowhere near the level I was started at, you know? So those level three desires are the things that will motivate you to actually change a behavior to execute the plan, but you don't let yourself think about them. So there's a mismatch because it's, it's socially awkward to right. talk about those things. 
Exactly. And, you know, when we do start to talk about it, you know, we feel silly. It's like, well, what, you know, and people may question us and that further feeds into it. What's your opinion? Why do you think we just stay stuck and not chase these desires? Because we think we can make the choice later. People delay choices thinking that they're not making a choice. But one of my favorite quotes, I have no idea who said it, is like, not choosing is still choosing. You yes. are actively choosing to make no choice. And that is why it's just, it feels easier. But what they don't realize is that it's harder. Yeah. Staying in that life that sucks, that's miserable all the time. No, no normal person would say, yes, I think we're supposed to be miserable for 80% of our life. I think that's the key. <laughs> Everyone wants to be happy, but they just refuse to believe that they aren't as happy as they could be. Like they pretend this is, this is a huge thing in the mindset space right now is, you know, the gratitude movement and like just being happy with where you are. It, it gets confused because the people who practice gratitude don't actually think they want to stay in that place forever, but it gets confused by the consumers of that information as if they should just be happy in that state that they are right. in. And that's not the purpose of practicing gratitude, but it's, it's a little mismatch on, on how they interpret it. Oh, definitely. It's okay to dream bigger, to want more, to desire more. There is nothing wrong with being eternally grateful for what you have now, but still wanting a better life, desiring more. So how did you get to that third level? How did you stop kicking your dreams in the face? <laughs> um, as soon as I recognized that that's what I had done, um, I, you know, being a business coach for so many years, I would always think, I don't know, I guess I don't know how to describe it exactly, but I would always watch these women who would get to this point where they would say what the goals were, but I could tell they were lying to me. And like, it's hard to get yourself to admit that you're lying to yourself. So whether it's the client or myself, it's hard to admit that the thing that you've said for so long is not true. So after all those, um, those years of sort of thinking that my life was stagnant, then, you know, I've COVID was a horrible nightmare for the whole planet, but for our perspective, it gave us a fire to say, wow, we have absolutely no responsibilities. All of a sudden there's virtual learning and what are we going to do? And that is when we took the opportunity to just leave the country and just start doing what we wanted to do because the, the regular thing that was expected of us was no longer a thing. So I, I feel like I'll never know because you can't, you can't know what you would have done in a different situation. I'll never know if I would have taken the leap had I not been given a, a golden opportunity, but I did say yes to the opportunity. So there's that. <laughs> I did say, yes, okay, yes. we're going to do what's different than what's expected in this moment. And I think it's important to recognize too, that even though you said yes, you probably still had a little fear that you had to push through a little resistance in your own mind that, all right, you know what? I'm just going to trust in this. I'm going to make the choice and detach yourself from that outcome and see what happens. Give it that chance. Yeah. When we left, I only had a two day Airbnb reservation and a one way ticket. And I said, we could always come back. Right. It, if this is a bad idea, if it's horrible, if we hate it, because we've never been to that country, it was the Dominican Republic was our first country. And we didn't know, we had no idea, but then we ended up staying for a year. We loved it. And so, you know, you just never know until you take that chance, but, but it was in my mind. I did want to just break free from all the stuff, the white picket fence and the, the carpool and all the things I wanted to break free from that. I just didn't know how. And once I, once I realized that I could, man, it was a game changer. And then I tried, you know, and then all of my behaviors aligned with what I wanted. All of a sudden I was executing on things that I had delayed for ages and ages and I was like making things happen because you're actually properly motivated. People think that they need a better to-do list or they need to be like better with their time or what it has nothing to do with that. 
you will find the time if you actually want to do that. But, you know, a lot of the business coaching doesn't really say that. It just says, let's be more productive. And it's not about being more productive. It's about being properly motivated. Exactly. And that right there is just a game changer, you know, taking back that power and really questioning those fears. You know, I love what you did. It's like, really, what's, what is the worst case? We move back, we book a ticket home. It's not the end of the world, but you started to make those, those small mindset shifts. You started to take action and look at the opportunity that presented itself. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Veronica, you are truly an inspiration. You are proof that just doing it, just doing the darn thing, take the messy action, take the chance, take the control back because we all have choices. We're just afraid to make those choices sometimes. So Veronica, where can we learn more about you? So I live mostly online at uh, veronicahanson.com. That's H-A-N-S-O-N, veronicahanson.com. And this is March. So we are doing a massive minimalism challenge right now. So if you go to my website, if you go to my Instagram, which is Nomad Veronica on Instagram, you will be seeing daily challenges for, um, you know, minimizing in March. And so there will be tons of content to help you with that on my blog and tons of fun um, ways to interact with that challenge to try to get you kickstarted on um, starting a minimalist journey of your own. Oh my gosh. I love it. You guys, Veronica is proof. She is proof that it is possible. So check that challenge out really, it's, it's really done so much for me personally. I can attest to it. I by no means am a minimalist, but having a decluttered lifestyle really, truly does create more opportunity, create more time, create more space. So check that challenge out, visit her website, follow along on Instagram. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 